Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chad no Chad Novak, and I am here representing the Saskatchewan Taxpayers Advocacy Group, which is a grassroots organization proudly standing up for the rights of individual taxpayers. I am here this time to address the unconsolidated year-end 2015 financial report. Something that I am very proud to be responsible for is ensuring that our city provides fair and equitable treatment to all taxpayers at Regina. With that in mind, given the numbers contained within this report, it seems that City Council administration have been unfairly going back to taxpayers for higher property taxes and higher water rates when every single year for at least the last decade they've realized quite significant surpluses. Now keeping in mind that these surpluses that I refer to are only those surpluses that are, that are realized when compared to the budget which would be in addition to any budgeted surpluses as the case may be. Now, after delegating at the May 10th Finance Administration Committee meeting, I have come to understand and appreciate that the City of Regina Administration and Council chooses to budget conservatively. As a risk-averse person myself, I am very pleased with this approach because more often than not, you're going to realize better financial results than you project. This is supported by the fact that the City of Regina has realized a surplus every single year for at least the past decade. Now, unfortunately for residents, however, more often than not, there has also been a property tax rate increase. The question that I can't help but wonder, and so many great citizens of Regina do as well, why then are they continually being asked to pitch in more every single year, when every year we're also realizing quite a substantial surplus? Now, I appreciate the reasoning given by CFO Ed Archer at that same FNA meeting, where any surpluses are put towards the reserves for quote-unquote unexpected and one-time expenditures. That's apparently changed tonight. One must ask then how much is reasonable to keep in the reserves and how many of these quote-unquote unexpected one-time expenditures have we realized over this past decade and how many then can we reasonably expect within the next decade. I think it's very important to differentiate here as Mr. Archer also suggested that an example of these unexpected expenditures was the condition of our physical assets and the eventual need for a replacement. Now I can't speak for everyone here, but what it would seem that a prudent financial professional would be would be budgeting for these eventual for the eventual need for a replacement of all assets. And thus these wouldn't really fit into this category as these would most certainly be predictable and expected. The stadium is significantly financed by debt. The wastewater treatment plant is also and it is also another physical asset that a prudent financial person or professional would have budgeted for anyways. So in the end, just how much do we need in the reserves? When, it is considered, when is it considered to be too much before you start going back to the taxpayers to fund what our annual surpluses could either in part or in whole? Now as you've seen, as you can see by the summary I put together, in Appendix A, over the past, or our reserves have skyrocketed over the last decade by over 500 percent. 500 percent. Just now, while the residents have been looked at each year for more property taxes, our water bills, as you'll see in Appendix B, have more than doubled in that same time frame. Some have. I won't go on. With this in mind, I want you to go on record this evening by telling the residents of Regina here tonight and watching on TV, why is it that you've felt comfortable with going back to them for more property taxes while we've steadily grown our reserves to over $236.7 million by the end of 2015 with no end in sight? I want you to go on record and explain to them why you've been okay with continual hefty increases in their water bills, while the utility reserve sits at record levels. You've got 30 seconds. Almost 80 million by the end of 2015, with no long-term plan to deplete it, even by a minimal amount. I want you to go on record and explain to them why you've been okay with charging them for recycling, when the landfill is realizing a multi-million dollar annual surplus and currently has over $20 million sitting in the reserves. I thank you for your time this evening, and I'll gladly answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thanks a lot for all your presentations. Thank you. Um, I just
just want to sort out a few of the points here because I heard a few different things. Um, you recognize we have an infrastructure deficit. Yes. Um, but also that taxes are too high in your city. Hmm. And also that uh, you shouldn't be putting money in reserve. And I'm just having a hard time kind of actually all those things. Well, it's not that we shouldn't put money in reserve. It's that the question becomes how much is reasonable? Like, you know, if we're having a, a $5 million surplus, for example, in one year, can we put half of that towards um, the next year's uh, operating budget and half of it into reserves? You know, what is the, what is the real uh, number that we need in there? Um, as you see in the, like I've put in that, in that table there, I mean, it, it's increased over 500%. When do we say this is too much? I'm glad we put money in the savings account. But I mean, me personally, I would rather pay off my credit cards than put money in the savings account first. You know, that makes sense. It's 18.9% 18, 18, 18 interest rather than the measly, what, 1% you get in savings account nowadays. It only makes sense. So, you know, in this sense, the credit card is the taxpayers. Do we keep going back to them? Even though we've got all this money to, and we did it one year, I can't remember, it was 2014. We took a million dollars out of that, that surplus and actually put it towards it. So, you know, it's, it's, I know it's a balancing act. I appreciate that. I appreciate there's a lot of working, uh, a lot of wheels in motion behind the scenes and everything. All I ask is that, you know, this goes on record and, and we need to explain exactly what's been happening. It just seems that we're, we're going back to them by default. And I think that's probably not the proper way to be doing it. Thank you. Thank you.